May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free from harm. May all beings love life. May all beings awaken. Welcome to another QQ Audio podcast. I'm DC Booba of QQ Audio and QQ Archives, preserving the legacy of Shinju Suzuki and those whose paths crossed his. And anything else that comes to mind. I pray that you and yours are safe and comfortable, free from economic hardship, and able to get out and do whatever it is you want within the limitations of the universal precept of do as little harm as possible. So uh, today we have a guest, uh, Amartat Kohn. I first met Amartat Kohn. <laughs> I last met Amartat Kohn, too in 1970 at Tassahara, when he and his film crew came and filmed uh, Shunyu Suzuki and Tassahara and included uh, what they filmed uh, in a movie called Sunseed. And that came out in 1973, as we talk about, but it was reissued two years ago. And uh, I just want to fill you in on how you can see it now. Uh, go to Sunseed dot org sunseed the journey and um you can um, see here I'll, now let me just tell you a little bit about it. if you go to sunseed the journey the documentary about how it all began uh, a film for the ages rare footage of the world's most influential spiritual gurus ram das sri bhagavan lama anagarika govinda Shunyu Suzuki Roshi, Pir Vlayat Inayat Khan, Swami Sachidananda, Swami Muktadananda, Merchant Samuel Lewis Sufi Sam. And uh, then uh, there's uh, Wisdom Talks, and uh, this featuring right now the Wisdom Talk with Peter Coyote who did the voiceover for the re-release of the film a couple of years ago. And uh, watch it free. All past episodes now available. He's been doing wisdom talks recently. So um, that gives you a little uh, clue on that. And uh, I'm going to give you another peek into what we talk about. Uh, He's working now on... uh, getting the seed money haha, to do a new film called Sunflower. And um, so you'll be hearing more about that. And uh, so after our pause to meditate, give a listen to uh, uh, what um, Amartat Cohen has to say. Good morning. Oh, yeah. Good morning. Good evening. Uh, how are you doing? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm swamped with it, but I'm I'm taking it as my dharma. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> so good. Good. Well, um, yeah. Go ahead. I'd like to get from you. Uh, you're, uh, you, you know, I'm sure you're busy now, so I can be as brief as you want. No, you're, no. I'm, I'm, I, this is all part of it. This is part of what I'm busy with. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I want, you know, for my own records, for Cuke Archives, yeah. your experience of making the film at Tassahara. Okay. Sure. Can, hey, can I record it? Please. Now, uh, how did Sunseed come about? Well, the Sunseed came about because I was, part of the group with uh, Murshid Sufi Sam. And I dropped out being a filmmaker. I used to work at K3D, the public television station. And so I'd sort of always thinking about what I might do next. And then he 
One day he said, uh, Philip, who was coming from public from uh, CBS, one of the television networks, to film the dances that we were doing with the Sufi dances, what are now called the Dances of Universal Peace. Mm-hmm. And just something inside of me just said, no, uh, if, if they're going to make a film on uh, what we're doing, and I realized it was more than just that. It was like all across the country, all across the world, there was a new awakening happening. Uh, it should be made by somebody who at least is is a participant in it. And I said, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do a film. It's just sort of like a lightning bolt, I guess you could say. And then as I started to explore uh, all the other manifestations that were happening, I definitely wanted it to include many different paths many because it uh, i always you know i've always believed everybody has to find their own way um the i think my film producer ralph silver was friends with richard baker and uh, jonathan altman and got us to an introduction to go to tasahara and to do film something with the zen center in san francisco so Mm. that's how that became included in the movie Mm. Mm. Oh, very interesting. I knew Jonathan was involved, or I I remembered Jonathan was uh, involved with that. Uh, yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, who, well, how many, it was a, I, I always think of it as a film about gurus in the um uh, late 60s and early 70s in America. It was, all, it was all filmed in 1970, actually. Everything was filmed. Yeah. And and who were the the teachers that you filmed? Of course, uh, Roshi Suzuki. We filmed with... We, we did something... We did put together like a little mini Holy Man jam with those people. And there was, there was actually some other teacher sitting on the stage, a younger guy. I don't even remember his name, unfortunately, but yeah. Steve Gaskin was there as part of it. Oh, far and, out. Huh. And, and Swami uh, Muktananda, when he came to America, Ram Das, of course, Baba huh. Ram Das, Ram Das. And, um, and then when I was at Ram Das's weekend, there was someone there named Hilda Charlton, who had quite a following in New York city. she, Came, she's probably one of the only women teachers, unfortunately, that we had. I just, you know, it wasn't it wasn't as much on everyone's thinking in those days. But now it looks like a big, like almost like a conscious lack. But it wasn't. It was just. It was just, you know, not that part of the scene. And there honestly were not very many women teachers around, except a few in India. Yeah. Um, and then and then uh, Rabbi Shlomo Karlbach was in it. And hmm. uh, let's think who else? Uh, uh, one of my regrets is that we didn't we didn't find a, a Christian representative that had a universal approach. When I get involved in the new movie, we're definitely going to include some of the contemplative Christian teachers who uh-huh. uh, have a very broad view of of uh, the Christian uh, message. And let's see. So then when we went to India, we uh, we also filmed with Lama Govinda. Uh, we filmed with uh, the teacher of Yogi Bhajan. His name was uh, Maharaj Jidharsa Singh. And then Pirvalayat, who was my guide to India, took me up into Rishikesh, into the Himalayas, to meet with some of the sadhus who you would never find unless you were a real sadhu yourself. Most, most of the authentic, I don't want to say authentic, most of the the sadhus who are deep involved in their practice won't talk to anyone else except another sadhu. They're not out in the public at all. Mm. Uh, and we got some of those people. We also got to, to visit uh, Nim Karoli Baba, who is the teacher of Ram Das, uh, in his uh, one of his uh, ashrams. Uh, and there were a bunch of American students sitting around him when we did the filming. Mm. And... I probably left someone out, but those are those are the main people that were in the movie. Mm, mm, wow, that is very impressive. Um, and Joe Miller, Joe Miller, who was sort of a local homegrown San Francisco uh, teacher, came from the anthropo- anth- uh, not anthroposophy, the, 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 the theosophy. What is the word I'm thinking of? Um, uh, Theosophical Society. 
he was he was much more in the, the heart a great guy he speaks at the funeral in the movie and uh and if yeah of course we try i tried to get to Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. my brother was very close to him but he wouldn't be in a movie with anyone else because he was the way and <laughs> the principles and uh and uh i also we i actually uh my producer was part of the work, the Gurdjieff work. So we, he actually arranged for me to go to a Gurdjieff community somewhere in, uh, I think, in uh, um, Amak, New York, uh, where, where they have the uh, IBM uh, home office. I forget the name of it. We went up there, and they had a vote or something and decided they didn't want to be in the movie. So we left. Mm. I was at Tom Sahara when you, when you came. T- tell, tell me about what you remember about that? Well, first of all, I remember the great beauty of driving up there. I mean, Big Sur was one of my favorite places on the earth. That was where I got married, my fish wife. Mm. And so just got, going, coming into this beautiful location, and then I remember it was quite steep, on high up on the mountain, and coming down into the valley. So that itself was already a sort of a, an initiation of coming into a different type of space in the world. And um, I don't remember how we eventually got to have that little interview on the path with Roshi Suzuki, but that was the only time I, we actually had any direct contact with him. And I remember that I wanted to uh, myself experience the Zazen. So I actually sat for uh, one of the days. I don't think every day, one of the days I actually sat for a couple hours with the group Um and I remembered that uh, it was uh, it was it was quite challenging for me <laughs> to, mm. to, of course, being a practiced uh, uh, sitter, so to speak. But I, I I know that I I was intrigued by Zen because I'd read some books on Zen, and, and I don't think I did not read his book, unfortunately. I don't think uh, at that time. And so I was really curious to understand really what this practice practice does. And I remember asking one of the people that's in his answer in the film, they'll just sort of laugh at you or ask them what Zen is. <laughs> so uh, it was uh, it, it was very impressive to see the the uh, the concentration that the that the people had um, who were practicing. And you could feel it, you know, from the kitchen to the garden to the to their sitting, even to the way they spoke in a way, so that you definitely understood that this was uh, a practice and an experience that was having a deep effect on the people who were doing it. Mm. And I, I I I loved when we did the interview with with Roshi Suzuki. You know that he even uh, we even caught it. Uh, captured a, a fortuitous moment because he's talking about, you know, if you're if you're concentrating on what you've read in the teachings, put it, you won't hear the birds, and just send a bird chirp. So, <laughs> 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 all right, on cue. We didn't actually dub that sound into it. It actually was there. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, um, and and then when I when I left, I did not make a decision at that point to uh, come back and, and sit regularly because I was, I was deeply involved with, you know, uh, other practices at the time, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but, uh, but I definitely uh, understood as one can with the mind, at least there was tremendous value there. Hmm. Wow. Well, and all right. So then you, you had your footage, you had a great deal of work then in editing to put together Sunseed, which came out in 1973? I think it actually premiered in 73, yeah. that's. I, I've done some research on We opened it up at the Palace of Fine Arts in San Francisco. I remember putting posters all over San Francisco, hoping people would come <laughs> at ourselves. And it actually was sold out. I... I saw it back then. I I can't remember where. Uh, I can't remember if it was Palace of Fine Arts or where it did it show at the Surf Theater. Well, um, honestly, I don't remember where we had it. We we did it in in different 
universities and halls. I don't. The only theater I think it actually ran in was uh, uh, one of the theaters in the Doheny Plaza in Los Angeles, because one of my college buddies was Bruce Corwin, whose father owned the chain, and I convinced him to let me premiere the film down there. Mm. But I, uh, so I don't think it was in the sort of theater. But Ralph, my my producer, was taking care of the distribution of it, so I'm sure all it appeared. Mm. Mm. Now, um, so that was 1973. Then uh, you and I got in touch a few years ago because you were bringing it back out. So how did that come about? Over the years, the film sort of lost its ability to be seen because it wasn't. We didn't ever uh, transpose it into into digital, and so it was originally on sixteen millimeter, and sixteen millimeter projectors just don't exist. Didn't exist after a certain point. There were some people that made a very. I think I made a a VHS copy from uh, a work print, so it was a very poor quality. A version of it that was circulating around and being seen by those people who you know who had it, and so people kept saying, "Can you can you bring it out again?" And and, and I decided at one point, I think almost maybe it was uh, 2014. It was quite a while before I decided, okay, I I will bring the movie out. I mean, it's my life works. So I'm gonna bring it out and show it. And I, I put in the money and, and transferred it to HD in good quality. And we had a lot of problem with the sound. The picture came out great, but the sound the, it was the magnetic uh, fil- filing on the coating on the, on the soundtracks had, had oxidized. Anyway, I don't need to give you all the technical stuff, but the, the sound was very difficult to get, but we did. And so what happened was uh, I, I looked at the movie after it was, transferred and I said something in me said uh uh-uh. uh because if I put the movie out now the way it was shown in 1973 it would well, many people wouldn't wouldn't be attracted to, or it wouldn't convey the the proper message because times have changed and it's now a historical document and and there was no narration in the movie originally. It was, yeah, right. I never liked to use narration as a filmmaker, and I didn't think it needed it. People just could experience it, right? Well, the experience it group that experienced it was quite old, <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, and so anyway, I decided it needed to be updated. And then I, uh, I was really busy with other things. It took me five years finally to find the right way to updated to put a narration on it and I put some of my own comment into it. The only person still alive was Ram Das, so I got some more footage with him and I got Peter Coyote to be the narrator who who brought his own great experience into it. Yeah. And while the film came out uh in two thousand nineteen. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, just two years ago. And um so what are you doing now? What are you working on now? For many years, people have been, were telling me, a couple of close friends who are in the movie business, uh, you know, you should you should make a sequel to the movie because uh, people want to know what became of the people who followed these teachings. And, you know, is it, is it meaningful? And I kept saying, no, 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 I don't want to spend another seven years of my life, which is how long it took to do the first one. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, d- doing another movie and it just it's just um, no and then as we uh, and we decided to distribute the movie ourselves because we felt even if I were to get a, a Netflix and there wasn't any guarantee they would take it I showed it to a few people they they didn't think it had much commercial potential but certainly if it was put on a major platform they would not spend any money or time to reach the audience that the film catered to. And with the new techniques with uh, uh, psychographics and the way we can pinpoint people using social media and the internet, we felt we could actually get a lot bigger audience by doing it ourselves and pinpointing that audience. Mm -hmm. And so we, we created a distribution, internet distribution company, and it's been very successful. We've reached, you know, uh, 
it's difficult to know the total number of people from our millions of, of, of views that have been seen on the ads, but we have now uh, almost 25,000 names of people who have actually uh, either paid money to see the film or, or, or went to our site and, and uh, purchased some merchandise or something else. So we're building a community around the movie. Now, could you say what the name of the company is and um, uh, how somebody can go there? Sure. Okay. So the company that made the movie is, and is making the new movie is called Rom Films Incorporated, R-E-M. And the, um, the, the group that we're working with is, is the Sunseed Media Group. Sunseed Media Group and the website is sunseed.org. O-R-G. Mm -hmm. And that's where they can get the movie and and uh, and soon we'll be able to to get the crowdfunding. And that's where we're going next. So finally, I decided uh, about right as we started to build the website, I, I realized that we were going to create a community and and they were hungry for something else. They want to know what, what not only what happened to the people in the original movie, what did it mean, but also there's lots of great thought, what I call thought leaders of today who are, you know, spiritual guides, but their spiritual has taken on even a, a broader meaning now today because we have a, a worldwide consciousness we have a, a consciousness of what we need to do to take care of our planet to take care of our animals to take care of each other's human beings where our neighbor is no longer as it was in biblical times the person who literally lived next to you the neighbor today is someone you've never met sitting in um in <laughs> bangladesh <laughs> right <laughs> and, and everything that we have to do will affect the person in Bangladesh, just as he might get on an airplane and affect uh, a million people in another country <laughs> mm. because of the pandemic or something else. So we're, we're so interconnected now. This new movie is really going to take the idea of spirituality to a, a di different level and, and not only have some of the great people from the disciples and followers of the past, but some of the great new thought leaders of today. Mm. And we're, uh, we're we're really um, I'm really uh, hopeful and positive that people will be able to uh, contribute to that movie. We're going to start crowdfunding on November 4th, uh, and that's basically what I hope your little video will will uh, will be shown. And, yeah, uh, and we're we're trying to raise uh, two hundred and ninety thousand in the first. Uh, round and then eventually we'll probably go back and do another round to, to actually uh, give equity shares in the new movie. Mm. So you're trying to raise two hundred and ninety thousand dollars to uh, development fund, develop the movie, get it ready to go, and yeah, start uh, the initial film. And, and what would do you have a working title for this movie? The movie is going to be called Sunflower because everybody wants to know what happened to the seeds. Oh, that is great. Great. Ah, so so now you are ha ha, getting ready to do another massive project, Sunflower. And it sounds very noble. It, it seems good. I think people will want to see it. Um, so um, uh There'll be follow-up, but there, are, I would imagine there will be new teachers, spiritual teachers, uh, maybe who weren't connected. Absolutely. Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. We're, I mean, I know already some of them, but a lot of this money is going to go into the research to find them and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and But, you know, we want to include people who are a spokesman for um I can't think of the proper term, but for the ecology of, of, of Gaia, for, for mm -hmm. taking care of Gaia, I guess is as good a way to say it as any. Uh, we want to find, because that's a spiritual job. I'm sorry, <laughs> it may not fit into the tradition, but it, it right, certainly right. is. Uh, taking care of our, our human uh, security, which includes global security on a level of weaponry. 
So some, one of the people that's definitely going to be in the movie is Jonathan Granoff, who's, who's who formed with Gorbachev an organization to stop nuclear weapons. Mm. Um, you know, um, I mean, I, and this is conjecture, so you can't really put it in, in print. But I mean, I, I'm I'm hoping that Jane Goodall will be in the movie if 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 she's willing. I'd love to get Greta. Uh, I hope we'll get to the Dalai Lama, um, and uh, some other lines. You know, we're gonna we're gonna go down to uh, South America and and probably participate in the ayahuasca ceremony. <laughs> so we're really looking at a broader view. It's pretty ambitious. Yeah, pretty ambitious. Wow. <laughs> nuts. Totally nuts. Wow. <laughs> All right. But well, we already have ends to some of these things, you know. Uh, and look, I'm not running the show. So as 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 is said in, in other traditions, you know, um, whatever is God's will will happen. <laughs> mm. Mm. Mm, right. Right. Say, so, how did you end up in Kuala Lumpur? For 30 years, uh, I I gave up in filmmaking and had to, you know, find some way to support my family of four because I was totally broke as a filmmaker. <laughs> and I um, I got involved in, in, a, in a business with um, nutrition and health products called Herbalife. Mm. And I... I uh, built a, a very large international business. And so one of the places that I went to open my business was in to uh, Malaysia in 2006. And there I met my current wife and uh, got married and, and she has some kids there. So we stayed there. So you're located in Kuala Lumpur and um, New York City. I got hold of you. Good Lord. How long ago? 20 years ago. Uh, uh, 15 years ago in, in Florida, I, I, I had to get old Ralph Silver, a Ralph or oh, yeah. Nancy, might, might have been Nancy's, Nancy um, Fish. Yeah, Nancy Fish. She told me how to get hold of you in Florida. Uh, or that's where your yeah. office was. Uh, I think I, ha I, oh yes, because my, my bookkeeper's address is in Florida, right. That's why I use it, because I'm traveling, but she's stable. That's right. That's what she said. Well, he's traveling, so I communicated with you via her. <laughs> wow. Well, that's really interesting. Well, um, um, if if you have more to say, please. Mm -hmm. Well, I just I just feel like we we are at a a pivotal moment in history. And I, maybe everybody's always felt that way about where they live and when they live. So, you, but, you know, I, I felt that was true in, in 1969 and 70. And I feel it's like in a way come a full circle that people now are, are wanting and needing really to have some, some guidance for their lives that goes beyond what perhaps they've been uh, taught and brought up with and that they also are ready to to be open to new directions and uh, hopefully be willing to make changes in themselves to move to a, a more peaceful world, inner and outer. And, it, and I think it's critical. I mean, we don't know how close we are to the brink, whether that be uh, a nuclear person who pushes the wrong button or makes a mistake or or uh, or the the natural forces that we uh, have unleashed uh, certainly participated in the unleashing that might uh, trigger a, a disaster to the human race, or you know any one of uh, or our own folly in terms of believing that we're our way is right and we have to use weaponry to 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 um, destroy what we perceive as uh, unhealthy or an animatic force. So I think this is really, uh, it's so important that we, we all stay together and find a way to live and appreciate each other and love each other. And that's what I hope this movie will, in its small way, be able to contribute to that mm. um, unifying consciousness. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, I uh, 
I will, and in my, I will do <laughs> in my small way <laughs> what I can to help you. It'll be lovely. I want to get your Renata's uh, uh, teaching in here. He was not in the first movie. He was really one of the first to drop the, the concept of the East into the West. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so many people were turned on by uh, autobiography of a yogi. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Yeah, well, I, I'm now in touch with, the, with the, the current head of his lineage. I really want to have uh, some good representative of the of the Buddhist path, and we just missed having a chance with uh, with Joanne um, Macy last week. Uh, something happened, and we didn't actually get get her on the you know our wisdom talk. But we, well, hopefully, I will be able. You know who she is, of course. Oh yeah, right? yeah. That's uh, that yeah, who yeah, came yeah. to mind yeah. uh, when you mentioned uh, you know. Uh, representative of the ecological, spiritual. So I, I'm glad you're including the engaged Buddhism. Um, uh, there ain't going to be no gurus or followers if we destroy ourselves. Exactly. But we have a choice on how we deal with them. That's yeah. interesting. And you know, as a Buddhist, that's what it's all about. I uh, a very strong believer in, in, in dealing with with things, uh, that spiritual practice, if it's to the exclusion of dealing with life and trying to be kind and reduce suffering and keep the world healthy, then it's, um, uh, you know, Nagarjuna said, uh, if, you, if you focus on emptiness to the exclusion of form, it's better never to have heard of it. <laughs> I don't know how he That's said wonderful. it. I read that long yeah, ago. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, you know, I, I just that tomorrow I have to do a, or get to do a, a wisdom talk interview with a, a woman named Satpaji Bhagavati Saraswati, who was a, a girl from Hollywood who got a, a lightning bolt experience unexpectedly at, while she was visiting in India and stayed there for the last 25 years and became oh. a disciple of a, of a great uh, Rishi, of a great, uh, he's not really a sadhu there, I guess you could say, a sannyasin. And she just came out with this book called From uh, From Hollywood to the Himalayas. Where she, and one of the things that she talks about in the book is, is, uh, is a lot of her faults and her mistakes and and her background as a battered kid and and uh, her her teacher who was a very traditional indian um teacher guru with many hundreds of thousands of disciples said you know i really give her credit because in our tradition we don't talk about these dark side things <laughs> and she, mm -hmm. she has the bravery to to, to take them on uh and discuss it and live with it. Mm -hmm. Westerners tend to do that. You know? Yeah, exactly. He says, not in our culture, right? Um, you know, I have a big oral written history of, of, you know, everything around Shunyu Suzuki's life, with all the people and everything. And I have no interest in, in uh, just presenting the positive. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anything else I can do to stimulate your tongue? Um, <laughs> no, no, I think that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, I think we should meet again sometime. Uh, uh in Bali, uh, it's gotta be in Bali. I've one of my favorite places on earth. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, or you can come to Kuala Lumpur and and stay, no problem. We can oh, great! Away. We we have we have pretty good friends there, uh, engaged Buddhists, um, and mm, uh, lovely. Uh, yeah, our our uh, we've really enjoyed being in Kuala Lumpur. We we've, we've been there about four times, but you know, just for a few days at a time, maybe five days at that time, the most. Yeah. Um, and uh, but mainly we just stay here. We actually only go out if we have to. Like if we have to get a new visa or something, which 
we don't really have to do now. But we do enjoy going there when we go there. And I want you to meet our friends there. And Katrinka goes to America once a year uh, to see her son and his family unless they come here. We'll see if she can get out this year. She's trying. Yeah. Well, anyway, we, 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 should, we should meet face to face. There's no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. And when we'll, 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 we'll find a time. Yeah. Sure. It'll most likely be here. Um, yeah. And that'd be good. Which would be fabulous. Yeah. I adore it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are they are they opening yet? Oh, they're they're always uh, trying to. Uh, you know the the COVID numbers are down so low now. Uh, yeah. It's really looking good, and they've had a very aggressive uh, vaccine program here and uh, mask. Uh, you know, wearing mm -hmm. masks, and you know, it's uh, a foreigner can get deported for not wearing a mask here. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's serious enough. There's a one million rupee fine, uh, which is seventy dollars. Uh, first offense, second offense is deportation. They have deported some people with the first offense, but those are people that had other strikes against them. Uh, you know, there's different types mm -hmm. of people here, and uh, so yep. they saw it as an opportunity to clear out some riffraff. Uh, <laughs> Um, and, uh, locals, um, uh, everywhere I go, I, I don't, if I see someone without a mask, it's unusual, but, uh, but Katrinka is involved with, uh, social stuff, you know, and bringing food into villages yep. and yep. stuff. And she sees, she goes to a lot yep. of places where people aren't wearing masks, uh, like in the city, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the Malaysia is getting quite good, so I'm hoping they'll let me back there in December at least. Uh, you know, they've got like 92% vaccination rate now. Jesus, really that is great. Bali's inching yeah. up toward yeah. uh, 80, but uh, yeah. 92, that is great. And that's very strict, not letting you back in. If you were coming here, you could get back in. Well, let me let you go. I'm uh, in the middle of trying to do this all uh, stuff. So thank you again. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. And uh, take care and good luck and we'll be in touch. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's all I ask. Yeah. Thanks Appreciate a lot. it very much. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. So thank you very much, Amr Cohen. I appreciate it. I want to get over there to Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> this has been a thank you very much, Amrita Kohn. Uh, that was great. Really appreciate it. This has been a Cuke Audio Podcast. I'm D.C. Puba of Cuke Audio and Cuke Archives, coming to you from Sleepy Sanur with Doggett Bandita, Feline Cuchita, and dear lovely Katrinka. And we're wishing you and yours and all of us a grand awakening. <laughs>